Hello and welcome to ShowMeAcademy.com. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to format cell alignment in Microsoft Excel 2007. Every time you enter data into a cell in Excel, it will attempt to align that data by default to the bottom of the cell, and it will align it either to the left of the cell or the right of the cell, depending on what type of data is contained therein. For example, on this column here, you'll see that the B column contains nothing but textual data. That text is treated by default as being left aligned. You'll notice that it's all aligned to the left edge of this column. Whenever you enter numerical data, that data is, is aligned by default to the right, or right aligned. You'll notice here all these values are aligned according to the right edge of this column. And again, if you don't have any formatting or any alignment defined for that cell before you start typing, it will apply this alignment once you've, once you've finished entering data. All the data is also aligned to the bottom of the cell, although usually when you have a default row or a default uh, value that's been put in a cell, you normally can't really tell that it's a bottom aligned because the row is usually short enough or small enough that it's not immediately obvious that it's aligned to the bottom as, a, as opposed to being aligned to the top or aligned to the middle of the row. But we'll illustrate some of that here. Now, of course, when I say that, that the text is aligned by default to the left and the data or the, the numbers are aligned by default to the right, that may not always comply with your wishes for the formatting of the document. And of course, there are ways for you to change that. So let's illustrate some of those here. First of all, I'm going to go select one of these text cells, which again is aligned by default to the left. And I'm going to stay on my home tab up here, which is the tab that comes up by default when I open Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to go over to the alignment section. And we have a number of different buttons here that allow us to manipulate the alignment of the data. Like I said, by default, it's aligned to the left, but if we want, we could uh, choose to have this aligned to the center by clicking on the center button, or we can choose to have it aligned to the right by clicking on the align text right button. When I do that, you'll see it's very clear that this one cell of data is aligned to the right while all the others are aligned to the left. And of course, you can do the exact same thing with numbers as well. So I could take this cell of data, which contains a number and by default is aligned to the right, and instead I could click the center button to center it, or I could click the text align left button, or align text left button, excuse me, and align it to the left. And now you see we have some text that's aligned to the right and a number that's aligned to the left. Now aside from that, you can also decide sometimes that even though you don't want things necessarily aligned to the opposite side, maybe you want some spacing on certain values or indentation, if you will. So what I'm going to do to illustrate that here is we'll select the same cell, which by default is aligned to the left. And now I'm going to go up to this Home tab under the Alignment section, and I'm going to click on the Increase Indent button. And when I do that, it doesn't right align the value, and it doesn't even center it. It just adds some trailing space in front of the value. So I can do this with, let's say, several values here and indent them. And now there's a, a clear visual cue that for whatever reason, these values here have been indented. Of course, if you want to remove that, you could take this and go to the decrease indent button. And I can do that and it moves them back over to the left edge. I can do the same thing with numerical data as well. So if I go here and I click this piece of, uh, this piece of data that contains a number, I will increase my indent and now it indents over from the right because by default it's right aligned. I can even do that several times to push it farther and farther over to the left. And if I want to decrease it, click the dec decrease indent, and I would have to do it several times to get it back to the right because I indented it several times over from the right. Now it's important to note that anytime you're doing this, for example, let's say I take this Dallas Cowboys value and I center it. Well, just having the Dallas Cowboys value by itself centered may look a little awkward in your table. And usually you don't want to have, you, you don't want to have to go through every single cell and center every single one of these. 
So all these commands that you have up here under the alignment section of the home tab can be applied in aggregate to any number of cells or any number of columns or any number of rows that you select. So for example, we might just click on B up here because we want to select the entire column. And we can say that this entire column should be centered. And now you'll see that all the values are centered. And we might decide that even though all the values are centered, I want the header to still be left aligned. So I'm going to click on that and go put that back on align text left. So now my headers are very cleanly aligned to the left across the top, but I might have decided that all of these team names should be centered in their cells. You can do the same thing with rows. I could take this entire row and decide that the entire row is going to be centered. And now it shifts all the data within their cells. I can say it's going to be left aligned or right aligned, etc. And of course, I don't have to select entire rows or, or columns. I can just grab a chunk of data like this and I can decide that it's going to all be left aligned. And now I've applied that to all the cells that I had selected there with my mouse. One more point about this is that I mentioned in the beginning of the tutorial that every piece of data is by default aligned to the bottom of the cell. And oftentimes you can't necessarily tell that that's the case, but I'll expand one of these rows to make it a little more obvious. If I come here, I'm going to pull this row down and you now can see that I've made this row, row five, very large, very tall. And because I said that all of this is aligned by default to the bottom of the, of the cell, you can see each one of my values here is sitting at the bottom of that cell. But just as I change the alignment, the horizontal alignment of all these values, I can also change the vertical alignment. If I wanted to, I'll go select this row, and I'm going to go back up here to the Home tab under the Alignment section, and you'll notice that the bottom align button is already selected because, again, by default, all values are aligned to the bottom by default. But I could decide to have it aligned to the middle of the set of the row, or I could have it aligned to the top of the row. And of course, I can choose any number of cells or columns when I do that. This concludes this tutorial, and thank you for using ShowMeAcademy.com.